Hey everyone, it's Mystery Girl with Missy and I'm Missy. Welcome back. This is the conclusion of part one of the series. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers for all of your support. It truly means so much to me. Thank you so much. And to all of my new followers, thank you so much for becoming a new follower. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure I'm letting you know I do have up my fair use disclaimer for the videos and photos I have used. There is a trigger warning with this whole entire series. The following video contains material that may be traumatizing for some audiences. This video is intended for audiences 18 and over. This video does contain extremely sensitive information and images. If there are children in the room, please have them leave the room. This video may be traumatizing to some. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of this series. Don't forget there is a second part to this series, and hitting that like button will help me get my videos out into the algorithm. Welcome to Willowbrook State School, the scandals and controversy behind it. This is part five, the lawsuit, closure, and who exposed Willowbrook. And this is the conclusion of part one of the series. In case you hadn't seen the prior videos, this is just a small recap. Willowbrook was a complex of buildings on Staten Island, housing children and adults with developmental disabilities. At its highest population in 1969, 6,200 residents were living in buildings meant to house 4,000 residents. Now, if you haven't seen the prior videos, they're linked below. Understaffed, undercrowded, and underfunded, Willowbrook was little more than a human warehouse, according to William Bronston, a physician at Willowbrook. The institution's overcrowding fostered abuse, dehumanization, and a public health crisis. Hepatitis was so rampant that several researchers took advantage of the situation to use residents as participants in a controversial medical study in which residents were intentionally exposed to the deadly virus without their consent in order to test the effectiveness of various vaccines. Now, if you remember, when parents admitted their children, sometimes they did sign consents just so they can get their child into the institution, not realizing exactly what they were signing approval for. Following a three-year legal battle in 1975, as a result of the travesties that had occurred there, the legal doctrine known as the Willowbrook Consent Decree was written. The consent decree was implemented to ensure that the residents' human and civil rights are met and protected. In 1975, April 30th, 1975, the Willowbrook Consent Decree was signed, committing New York State to improve community placement for the, quote, now designated Willowbrook class, end quote. Under the terms of the agreement, Willowbrook was given until 1981 to reduce its number of residents from 6,000 to no more than 250 residents. The state, quote, would be required to spend $2 million to create 200 places for Willowbrook transferees in halfway houses, group homes, and shelter workshops. In 1983, the state of New York announced plans to close Willowbrook, which was now the state, the, I'm sorry, the Staten Island Developmental Center since 1974. By 1986, Willowbrook housed 250 residents, with the last residents leaving on September 17, 1987. In 1989, a portion of the land was acquired by the City of New York with the intent of using it to establish a new campus for the College of Staten Island, which opened in 1983. 
look how absolutely beautiful it is. Don't get me wrong, there are still abandoned buildings there which are very disturbing to look at, but I'm really glad that they did take part of the land and make it into something beautiful out of something that was so horrific that was going on there. So this was a positive. The Willowbrook lawsuit following the Rivera expose, parents of Willowbrook residents filed a class action suit in U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of New York on March 17, 1972. The lawsuit alleged that conditions at Willowbrook violated the constitutional rights of the residents. And following the um, Geraldo Rivera expose, like I just said, um, on March 17, this was filed. The lawsuit alleged that conditions at Willowbrook violated the constitutional rights, like I just read, of the residents. Multiple violations were included. The lawsuit sought immediate injection relief to improve conditions at Willowbrook. The case proceeded to trial on October 1st of 1974. The case was settled on April 30th of 1975. When Judge Judd signed Willowbrook consent judgment, although the parties ended up in court many more times in disputes of ongoing um, issues, implementations of the consent decree, it was in a sense fully implemented in 1987 when the Willowbrook State School and Hospital officially closed its doors. Who exposed Willowbrook? Well, we had gone over two already, which we'll go over again, but if you haven't seen it, make sure you look in the description below and go back and watch those videos. One was Senator Robert F. Kennedy in 1965. Now I played that whole entire speech for you, and in that speech, Mr. Kennedy had actually called Willowbrook a snake pit. Unbelievable, he had literally called it a snake pit. It's so sad what these children had to go through. Then there was the late Eric Ertz, who was pictured right here. He was um, from Staten Island photographer who captured the first images that exposed the cruel treatment in the early 1970s. Right next to him is Miss Jane Curtin, who was a former Staten Island advance reporter. In 1971, she went with Mr. Eric Ertz, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, to Willowbrook and photographed shocking images of children and adults kept in cages. Next is Dr. Michael Wilkins of Missouri, exposed the shocking treatment of mentally ill and disabled people in Willowbrook, which led to laws that protected disabled Americans. Right here is pictured um, Mr. Michael Wilkins, and um, he was a Willowbrook doctor who met with Geraldo Rivera on January 6th of 1972 at a small diner. He met Mr. Rivera secretly, describing the horrible conditions he had been fired for trying to improve. So he tried to help and he was fired for it. He handed Geraldo Rivera a key to one of the buildings, building number six. This was Dr. Michael Wilkins, who was pictured above. Another Willowbrook doctor, Dr. William Bronston, went on to lead the exposure and class action lawsuit against Willowbrook co-author of A History and Sociology of Willowbrook State School and Public Hostage, Public Ransom, and Ending Institutional America. If you would like to read these books, I've actually heard that they are worth reading. So um, I don't know if you have Amazon, um, maybe it's downloadable, I'm not really sure. Like I said, I haven't read it, but I have heard it's definitely worth reading. And probably the most famous for exposing Willowbrook is Geraldo Rivera. 
which the show aired in February of 1972. Now, Geraldo Rivera has done update specials um, and interviews, which I've also have attached to my video series. So if you haven't seen these videos, make sure you go into the description below. They're all linked right there. Geraldo Rivera's interview was so well known, like he exposed everything that was going on there. And it really took a toll on him pretty much for his whole life. Um, in a recent interview, you can actually see him still crying about what he saw that day when he was there to do that interview. So make sure you watch that interview. The whole interview is there. Additional building information. I want to make sure I'm including as much information as I was able to find. This is building number 19, um, not the photo behind it. I couldn't find an actual photo of it. Um, here at the southwesternmost corner of the Staten Island campus stands a faded sign that once denoted the location of building number 19, a men's dormitory known for its zoo-like conditions. Ward 19 was designed with 100 people in mind, but it would go on to house twice as many. Today the site is home to the University Department of Biological and Chemical Sciences, the former sign for Building 19. Wow. I don't understand how they can do, I mean it was designed for 100 people and then they had 200 there. They had to have been in the hallways everywhere. I can't even imagine. Building number 29. The still standing structure was one of the many buildings at Willowbrook that housed individuals whose families lived on Staten Island. Although some of the patients were disowned or abandoned, many were brought here by their families who were told that their loved ones would be given the treatment that they needed. It's so sad, so sad. And these buildings, like I said, there are so many um, abandoned buildings that still stand at Willowbrook, and that just happens to be one of them. Um, these families really, that put their children there, really thought they were going somewhere that would help their child, and uh, unfortunately were treated inhumanely. I'm going to read the next part. We're going to go back to Robert F. Kennedy for a moment. Um, if I stumble over my words, I do apologize. Conditions eventually led to improvements in these facilities. In 1965, Senator Robert Kennedy, accompanied by a television crew, toured the Willowbrook State School in New York and described what he saw during his visit. In that same year, Senator Robert Kennedy addressed a joint session of the New York legislator on the dehumanizing dehum conditions of the Rome and Willowbrook institutions in New York. Kennedy said that residents of these institutions were being denied equal access to education and deprived of their civil liberties. In 1966, Burton Blatt, a professor at Syracuse University, and Fred Kaplan echoed Senator Kennedy's attack on the institutions with their photographic essay entitled Christmas in Purgatory. Using a hidden camera, Blatt and Kaplan captured life inside the public institutions. You know, I just wish that once they had captured all of this, um, that something was done much sooner. It shouldn't have taken so long for something to have been done, especially with Senator Robert Kennedy being involved. It's very, very upsetting. What was Willowbrook, Willowbrook Crip Camp? Located a few hours north of New York in the Catskills, the summer camp for the handicap run by hippies was in session for children, teenagers, and adults from the 1950s through 1977. So they actually had a camp where they would send some of the residents to. So next we're going to get into the Willowbrook Mile, which was made after Willowbrook shut down. Please pause the video on replay 
to read the mile markers after the premiere if you're watching during the premiere or if you're watching after the premiere you can pause it now um, I won't be reading everything I'll read some of it but if you were interested in reading all of the mile markers just hit pause okay Willowbrook Mile more than a decade ago CSI along with the Staten Island Developmental Disabilities Council the Institute for Basic Research, otherwise known as IBR, and the Office for People with Developmental Disabilities, OPWDD, began a project to establish a memorial walking trail, the Willowbrook Mile. The mile is designed to preserve the site's history and to create a visionary presence that commemorates the social justice and deinstitutionalization movement to ensure the rights of all persons to live with dignity and thrive in their communities, says CSI Today. Now, I know the company that I worked for on Long Island, along with other companies on Long Island, actually went out of their way to give individuals life skills. Um, some of the individuals were able to grow and thrive some even getting married and living on their own. And the companies on Long Island actually take the time to teach these life skills so they can be independent and live on their own and create their own life with a husband, some maybe even having their own children. Now, if you look at the top right-hand corner, you'll see the road behind the um, photoed map. This small road connecting a street to Loop Road was the main thoroughfare in and out of the eastern portion of Willowbrook State School, as stated in the CSI Guide for Willowbrook Mile. This gate symbolizes the crossover from institutionalization and isolation to integration into society for people with disabilities. Through this crossover, the property began to transition from a creage that once stifled growth to one that offered an enriched life with hope and with opportunities. That is absolutely beautiful. I am so happy they did something so positive out of something so negative. Before we start the mile markers, I'm gonna show you some photos from the actual ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, it was actually such a beautiful day. Everybody was so happy. Um, it was such a great moment. And here is Geraldo Rivera um, helping cut the ribbon along with who he calls his brother. I absolutely love that. This is Milestone One, which was the uh, Willowbrook Archives. Again, pause the video if you're interested in reading each mile marker, okay guys? Just hit pause. This is Milestone 2, which was Building 19. I had read to you a little earlier in this video. Again, if you want to read more in depth, hit pause. This is Milestone 3, Halloran Hospital, which we had gotten into um, in one of the videos where the army actually commandeered um, the building and took it over. This is Milestone 4, the Consent Judgment, the 1975 Consent Judgment. Milestone 5, Isolation to Inclusion. Milestone 6, Exposing Conditions at Willowbrook, the Geraldo Rivera Exposure. I don't know how else to word that. Milestone 7, the baby unit, which we had gotten into a little bit um, earlier in the series as well on this video.
the baby unit. The baby unit was where infants and young children were housed. Like Ward 29, the building is on the eastern side of the campus and is mainly fenced off. The unit was reported to have overcrowding, which results in a lack of care to the institution's most vulnerable patients. Children were often left for long periods of times in standing boxes, which allowed um, people to straighten and control their posture. Physical therapists in the unit were employed on a consultation basis with direct hand on treatment implemented by AIDS. Now, when we get into the next part of the series, you're gonna actually find out about one of, this, one of these physical therapists. Mile eight, Connolly Center. Again, hit pause if you'd like to read to find out more. Mile nine was building 29, which we had read earlier as well. Milestone 10, Institute for Basic Research. Milestone 11, the Willowbrook Hepatitis Study. Again, there is a whole video on this, so go back and you can watch the whole video. Milestone 12, Governor State School. This is the crossover gate, a much closer photo of it where I had read to you earlier. This is a map of the Willowbrook Mile. An estimated 12,000 residents died at Willowbrook from 1950 to 1980, approximately 400 a year. Many who came to Willowbrook lived a short, brutal existence. They died because of neglect, violence, lack of nutrition and medical mismanagement, or experimentation. My heart will always remember what these children, young adults and adults had to endure. My heart will always wonder how any person could sit back and allow it to happen. I will forever be thankful to those who gave these individuals without a voice, a voice. Let's take a moment to see the images again. I want to show them again, so maybe, just maybe, someone in the field that is having a bad day will ask their boss for a break instead of possibly becoming so overwhelmed they cause harm. We still to this day hear news reports of abuse by staff to children, young adults, adults and elderly. Remember, it's always better to ask for help or a break than cause harm. If you see something, say something. Don't just stand by. I have my trigger warning up. The following video contains material that may be traumatizing to some audiences. This video is intended for audiences 18 and over. Let's take a moment in silence and respect what these children, young adults and adults had to endure.
I know just how hard it is to look at these photos, but they need to be shown so everyone knows what these children had to endure. This is a plaque and it says, to honor those who struggled here on the grounds of Willowbrook Institution, we preserve this former building number in the respectful remembrance. A promise fulfilled. The institution once known as Willowbrook State School, which occupied this site for 36 years, was closed in 1987. The end of this institution symbolizes the success appropriateness of New York State's commitment to provide an extensive and comprehensive program of community living opportunities for its citizens with mental retardation and developmental disabilities. Erected 1987 by State of New York Mario Cuomo, who was the governor, Arthur Y. Webb, commissioner, Officer of Mental Retardation and Developmental Disabilities. So much good came out of so much bad. I just wish, wish that it had happened so much sooner. This is the historical marker for the promise fulfilled. A promise fulfilled. The institution once known as Willowbrook State School, which occupied this site for 36 years was closed in 1987. The end of the institution symbolizes the success and appropriateness of New York State's commitment to provide an extensive and comprehensive program of community living. Opportunities for its citizens with mental retardation and developmental disabilities and it's signed by Mario M. Cuomo, Governor, and Arthur Y. Webb, Commissioner of the Office of Mental Retardation and Developmental Disabilities on September 17, 1987. I'm really sorry I wasn't able to find a clearer copy of that. This is the key. Willowbrook Closing Ceremony, A Promise Fulfilled, on September 17, 1987. This is the end of the first part of the series. Make sure that you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of part two. I still can't believe what I found during the research for this video. And guys, I really, I know how disturbing these videos were. And I thank you for sticking with me. Your support means so much. But these type of schools and institutions need to be called out. I want to ask you to remember to hit that notification bell and the like button because that helps get my videos out into the algorithm. And don't forget to hit that subscribe. You don't want to miss part two and what I found when I was doing my research. Until next time, guys, every day is a mystery.